449 as we begin 449 all I need page 449 here we go Jesus Christ is made to me all I need all I need he alone is all my plea he is all I need here he is amen with some Righteousness and power, holiness this very hour, my redemption full and free, he is all I need, this is good, he redeemed me when he died, all I need, all I need, I with him was crucified, he all I need is good with some righteousness and power. Holiness this very hour, my redemption full and free. He is all I need. Here, this is good. He's the treasure of my soul. That's good. He's all I need. All I need. He has cleansed and made me. Can you say that? I is all I need. It's good. Oh, it's some righteousness and power. Holiness this very hour. My redemption full and free. He is all I need. Let's do that fifth verse. Glory, glory to the Lamb. All I need, all I need, by His Spirit sealed I am. He is all I need. Here we go. With some righteousness and power, holiness this very hour, my redemption full and free, He is all I need. That'll get you going in the morning, amen? He is all of that and so much more, amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for being all that we need. Yes. Everything we need spiritually, emotionally, physically, mentally, everything we need. Lord, you're everything we need in this life and in the life to come. And I pray that you just help us. Help us in this service this morning. Help us in Sunday school. Lord, may we learn of you May we continue to develop good Christian character in our life. And Lord, that you would help us with that. I pray also that you'd help in the service, yes. that I'd have clarity of mind in the preaching, be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray for every song, the special, everything that's done would be for your honor and glory and for our edifying and our growth. And I pray, Lord, that if there's someone that comes to our service today lost or watching by way of Facebook, that today would be their day of salvation. That you would meet the need of every Christian here and watching and listening. I pray that you'd help. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You all may be seated. Good to see everybody this morning. Do continue to keep uh, folks that are sick in prayer. And pray that God will keep us all healthy and safe. Yes. And, and uh, Lord, that the Lord would um, just continue to work. And those that do get sick, that it would not complicate and become an issue where they end up in the hospital, those types of things. So keep each other in prayer. You know we're supposed to do that, right? We're supposed to pray for each other. Amen. I'm supposed to pray for you. You pray for me. We all Amen. pray for each other. Uh, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And that takes us to our Sunday school lesson. Amen. Um, we have been talking the last few weeks about character, Christian character, integrity. Um, we 
There, there is a great need for that nowadays. We, we live in an age of what is called situation ethics. Uh, I remember learning about that way back when I was a little boy, 10 years ago. Uh, but uh, I remember hearing about situation ethics where depending on the situation, if you're hungry, it's okay to steal. Uh, if you don't want to hurt somebody's feeling, it's okay to lie. That's not biblical, by the way. That's, right. That's not God's word. That's the world's way of thinking. Uh, always trying to find a loophole, a way out, uh, why the rule doesn't apply to me. Uh, but, but good character, by the way, good p character doesn't care about the polls. Doesn't care about the polls. Doesn't care about what is popular at that time. By the way, if what's popular at the time is the right thing, I have no problem with that. But most of the time it's not going to be. The majority of the time, what's, what's right and what's popular are going to be two different things. The big thing that they say nowadays is you want to be on the right side of history. What they mean by that is you need to think like us on this issue because in, later on in history, people are going to frown upon you for your view. I'd rather be on the right side of his story. I'd rather be on the right side of him. And so... Good Christian character, uh, there, there's many things that people have said about it. It's, it's who you are in the dark. It's who, are, who you are when nobody else is looking. It's an interesting thing, but there's always somebody looking. That's right. I, uh, I went to one of my favorite stores the other day. I mean, it's one of my favorite stores, the 99 Cent Plus store. Amen. <laughs> Love that store. Amen. <laughs> Love their Minute Maid orange juice when they throw it on sale and their bacon. Uh, and not begging strips either. It's bacon, real bacon. But uh, enjoy that store. I like to go there. Like to, I, I, I like running through and see what they got. And, and, um, and I was there, and, uh, you know, I had a mask on. Everybody else did. And, and I'm, I'm over by the, the, the coolers where they have all the different, you know, frozen foods and the, the food that needs to be kept cold. And, and I'm over there, and this guy comes around, and he's just kind of looking. Got, got that look like, you know, like he knows me. But then like a curiosity look, and then he kept going. And I went, oh, okay. Oh, uh, no, that was interesting. And I went around, and I went around, and I'm now over by the, by the I don't know why I was by the vegetables, but I was. Uh, but uh, uh, I'm over there, but I like to look at their fruits and the things that they have. But uh, I'm over there, and, and this guy comes back around again. He looks at me, and he goes, Pastor Schumacher. I said, see, that means yes, David. Uh, and um, he's from Brother Victor's church. I didn't know him. It's just that I'd been down there and Brother Victor had me get up and preach before or introduce us as pastors. And so he knew me, I didn't know him. And I got to thinking to myself, what if I'd been over there by the liquor? What if I'd been bobbing my head and tapping my toe to the music? There's always somebody looking. But whether somebody's looking or not, our integrity should say we're going to do what's right. That's right. And as Christians, we even have a different set of integrity than the world does. There, what's, what's considered many times integrity in the world, ours goes even further than that. We dealt with the, the matter of, of faith as being part of character. Uh, you're going to have to have faith to follow what the Word of God has to say. And you're going to have to have character to uh, 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 live by faith. You know, it takes character, right? That's right. Um, and now we've been talking about prayer as a part of biblical character. Prayer takes discipline. Prayer, prayer is a discipline. Uh, and we're not talking about just the, 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 the quick bow your head and close your eyes, little prayers you say before a meal or before you go to bed. We're talking about a complete prayer life, which is the Bible says pray without ceasing. We should be in a constant state of prayer. Uh, that doesn't mean we walk around with our hands folded and a halo over our head. But we're talking about being in constant communication with God. By the way, that takes, that takes character. Mm -hmm. To have the discipline to have your mind set on Christ. It takes discipline to have a time of prayer every day. It takes discipline to, to, to have prayer and what we want to do is we want to pray, and we want to pray effectively. 
effectively. And, um, and we want to pray fervently. James chapter 5, verse 16. Um, very familiar verse. But James chapter 5, verse number 16. I want to read it again. It says, confess your faults one to another. And pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We want prayer that is effectual. That has effect. That something happens when we pray. Um, you don't want it to just be words. You don't want it to be, you want what happens between you and God to mean something, to affect something, to affect you first, and then to affect this world for Christ. We ought to have a prayer life that affects the lives of our brothers and sisters in Christ, Amen. that affects the lost people, that affects our family, that has an effect. Uh, we need the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And we began to talk about fervent prayer. Fervent prayer begins with, first of all, with confession. With confession. Amen. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2, those verses which said, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. Neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. Verse 1 of that passage lays down the facts. This is the facts about God. His hand is not shortened. I use the example of you would see where, you know, somebody had fallen off the edge of a cliff and they're hanging on and somebody's got their hand and they're trying to reach down there and sometimes they just can't reach far enough. That's not God. Whatever cliff we're hanging off, his arm is long uh, enough. It's not shortened. That's right. Uh, also, uh, talks about, uh, you know, being, being short with somebody also has an idea of, of uh, being... Um, uh, tight with somebody, being not, not giving them what they need. God's hand is not shortened. His hand is full. And his hand, he's not holding back. He, 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 um, he's not holding back from us because he doesn't have the ability. Sometimes he does hold back from us. But it's not because he doesn't have the ability. His hand's not shortened. And it says, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. So the facts are, here's the facts. God's hand is not shortened, and he hears everything we say. But, verse 2 says this, but, when you see that little connector word right there, that matters. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God. Sometimes it's the reverse. Sometimes it's a good thing, but something bad because of something. This is that situation. God's hand's not shortened, and his ear is not deaf that he cannot hear. That's the good news. If we, boy, we could preach on that, right? But that's a message right there. You can preach on it. But then you get to verse 2. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins, listen to this, have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. So if God's not listening, it's on purpose. Not that he can't hear. It's that your sins and your iniquity have caused him to be deaf to what you're saying. We have that saying, we want our, ceilings, our, our prayers to go above the ceiling. We don't want them to bounce off the ceiling. It's not that God doesn't hear us or that God's not listening or God doesn't pay attention. But there are times when he will go deaf to our pleas. Because um, our sins and our iniquities. So if we're going to have that communication where God is listening, God is hearing what we have to say, then we have to be right with God. God wants us to be right with him. David in his confession psalm in Psalm 51 talks about he was getting right with God so that God would restore unto him the joy of his salvation. So that God, his fellowship and his relationship with God had been fractured and broken and he wanted that repaired and the only way was the mercy of God and his repentance so we 
begin our fervent prayer, that passionate prayer, that intense prayer, that prayer that touches heaven with confession. Fervent prayer is filled with praise. Fervent prayer is filled with praise. It is human nature to talk to people with a give me attitude. Uh, it comes from, you see it in children from the very smallest age. Um, give me this, give me that, give me this, give me that. It's mine. Let me have it. Give me this, give me that. Don't have to teach that to kids. You know what you do have to teach the kids? Say thank you. Say please. I Go say thank you, right? That you have to teach. The other comes natural. And for humans, it is natural for us to feel like we deserve, feel like we should get. It's just natural to us. But as Christians, we don't live after the old sin nature, do we? We live differently. Christians ought to have a heart of praise and gratitude when they come to the Lord in prayer. Usually what we do is we bring him our laundry list, our grocery list of things that we want. God, help me with this, 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 goodbye. That's basically our prayer. But there's more to prayer than that. Prayer includes confession. And if we're going to have that effectual, fervent prayer that avails much, we have to have confession of sin and iniquity, and we have to learn to praise the Lord. Go to Hebrews chapter 13. We're in the book of James, just back one book to Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 15. Look at Hebrews 13, 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So we see two things in that verse, sacrifice of praise and thanks to his name. And notice how often we're supposed to do it. Continually. Now I want you to think about something. He says pray without ceasing. We're supposed to pray continually. So how are we sharing thanksgiving and praise to God from our lips. It has to be a part of our prayer life. If you're in constant communication with God, and you're supposed to be praying continually, and you're supposed to be praising continually, and you're supposed to be thankful continually, a big part of prayer is confession, but also praise and thankfulness. And I know it's talking about when they would walk up into the when they would, they would do those, you have those uh, 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 psalms of degrees, which are psalms when they were walking to the temple, when, or uh, um, the tabernacle, and of course it was the temple, those, those that they would quote those psalms. But uh, uh, Psalm 100 says what? Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. That was talking about the earthly gates and courts, but there's also earthly, uh, there's also heavenly gates and courts that we need to be entering boldly and we need to enter with praise and thanksgiving. Spend time in your prayer thanking the Lord. And it says his name. You say, why, why thank his name? So if you start thanking his name, you'll realize you covered everything that he did for you. Provider, perfect, protector, peace, uh, uh, all the things, bread, uh, uh, water, life. He, every, he, you start just talking about the name of the Lord, you're going to cover what he did for you that week. He provided your bread. He provided your life. He provided your water. He provided your, your provisions. He's the God uh, 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 Almighty. He, he showed himself powerful. When we go into prayer, there needs to be confession, but there needs to be filled with praise and thanksgiving because if we're supposed to pray without ceasing and we're supposed to praise and thanks continually, then they're going to have to meld together. So we need it together. Talking about effective prayer that availeth much, right? Needs to have confession, be filled with praise and thanksgiving. Fervent prayer takes time. 
It takes time. Go to Psalm 55. Psalm 55. We've already quoted 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. Three-word verse. Pray without ceasing. Psalm, I'm sorry, that's 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. Now look at Psalm 55, 17. Psalm 55, 17. Psalm 55, 17. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. That's what we want is him to hear us, right? We talked about how the confession tunes his ear back towards us. That praise and thanksgiving that we give tunes his ear to us. And then we need to realize that it takes time. This is an instant day and age. We want everything instantly. Um, we like our Whataburger, right? We are Texans, right? We like our Whataburger. Um, I don't know if you all used to do this, but we used to always call it Whataburger. Whataburger, because they, you know, they make the stuff fresh, and so you have to wait longer. So we used to go, well, let's go to Whataburger. And uh, we don't like to wait, though, do we? We want it done quick. We want it hot, fresh, right off the grill, but we want it in 30 seconds or less. Uh, and it don't work. Uh, but, uh, but, but we like our stuff quick, right? That, that is, it's an amazing thing in the restaurant industry that they've talked about how uh, companies have had to adjust to people want the stuff quick. They want it quick. You know, even you, go, even you go and sit down in a sit-down restaurant, we want our food quick, right? Um, see people on the, uh, you know, putting their reviews. I had to wait 20 minutes for my food. You know, I had to wait 30 minutes for my food. And uh, uh, because we're, we're a society that wants it like this, you know. Uh, the little girl one time told her mom and said, cook the food the old-fashioned way, microwave it. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, that's how we want it, right? I don't like the microwave. Uh, you know, I don't like my meat with rubber edges. But, uh, um, but, but that's really what we want. It was an amazing thing when we went looking for houses when we were buying way back, almost 11 years ago. We were looking for houses, and how the kitchens had shrunk because people don't want to spend the time in there cooking and all those things. Uh, they 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 want things quick, instant. Um, that's not how it works with God. Uh, there are times when God moves very quickly. But there are times when it takes time. And he wants us to spend time in prayer. You heard this saying that parents have. Well, um, we, we try to give them quality time instead of quantity time. You know what your kids want? Quantity. They want you around. They don't want you 30 minutes of quality time a day. They want to spend time with you. Uh, uh, it, and by the way, if they feel like you're not spending enough time with them, what do they start doing? Acting up, showing out. Mommy, 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 mommy. Daddy, 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 daddy. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. Why? They want, well, because they're selfish. Uh, but, uh, but also because they want, they want time, right? They want your time spent with them. They want time. My, my son, Jonathan, and... Uh, He's watching. Hey, Amen. But uh, my son Jonathan, he uh, um, he wants my time, and he gets upset if I'm if I'm spending time with him, and I get a phone call. He does not like it. He's uh he's got this bicycle that we you know that's made specially for him, and it's got this pole that we can guide him, and he can pedal it, and and we strap him in, and all this stuff, and and boy, he we're always pushing him to you pedal it yourself, you pedal itself, and he and he, and he won't, you know, he just. He likes daddy pushing them, you know, but uh, like push. Well, I got a phone call once that I answered. And so I, I'm on the phone and I'm supposed to be pushing him, you know, so I'm, I'm doing it with one hand and I'm on the phone. No, I'm going to go back and look, brother. Uh, but, uh, but all of a sudden he got mad and he took off with his bicycle. He was mad. I said, I'm have to make him mad every time. So he'll bicycle. Amen. <laughs> Jonathan's probably at the house going, stop talking about me, amen? But he wants my time. He wants to spend time with me. Uh, we went out, had, by the way, uh, folks, if you, if you weren't here yesterday for, for door knocking, it was hot. But boy, we had a good time out there. Good prospects. Uh, one came to know the Lord. Several others that are just 
good prospects. Uh, but after it was all done, um, my wife and I went to Golden Corral for my birthday, and, and we had, we just, it was a good time spending time together. We didn't talk about anything specific. We, didn't, we, just, we just were together, and it was nice. It's really nice. God wants us to spend time with him, too. And God wants you to ask more than once many times. He wants you to continually ask. Some of you have been praying for somebody for 10, 15, 20 years. Keep going. Keep praying. Amen. Evening, morning, and at noon. Evening, morning, and at noon. What does it say there? Evening, morning, and at evening, and morning, and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. Prayer, fervent prayer takes time. Takes time. Fervent prayer takes structure. Fervent prayer takes structure. When they told Daniel, don't pray, Daniel had a structured time for his prayer. Now, I don't believe that the only time that Daniel talked to God was just at that structured time. Because we're supposed to pray without ceasing, right? That means being in a, in a constant state of being in contact with God. But there, are, there does need to be structure in your prayer. And there needs to be times when you have specific times that you spend with God. The Bible talks about entering into your prayer closet, right? You know that's specific, right? If you're going to do that, it's, it's structured. Not only that, but you ought to have structure in, in keeping track of prayer requests. Notebooks. Amen. Something to keep track because we will forget. You do realize when you're praying, there's spiritual battle, right? right? And Satan will distract, and Satan will bring things in, and before you know it, you're done praying, and you forgot half the stuff that you thought to pray about. Amen. But if you have it written down, you can go to the Lord in prayer. So have structure. It needs to be continual. It needs to take time, but it needs to be structured. Yes, we need to be talking to God continuously, but we also need to have those times when we fervently go into a prayer closet, when we fervently go someplace, and we, uh, as, as Daniel did, he would open those windows towards Jerusalem, constantly praying that God would restore Jerusalem, but he would pray. I don't believe that was the only thing he prayed about. But that was what he did. He had a structure, a place in his home that he went to. That's how they knew they could get him, because he did it every day. They knew that was his structure. They said, we're going to get him for it. We ought to have structured prayer. If we're going to have that fervent prayer that availeth much, it has to be structured. Fervent prayer takes the participation of the Holy Spirit. Fervent prayer takes the participation of the Holy Spirit. Go to Romans chapter number 8. Romans chapter number 8. Romans chapter number 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 to 28. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. This is the amazing thing about having the Holy Spirit dwell within us. I understand that I'm a new creature. But I also understand that I am flesh. And I understand that I still battle my flesh. And I understand my weaknesses, and I understand that there are times that we ask for things we ought not to ask for. And there's times that we don't ask the right way. And there are times when I've been having a conversation with somebody, and I'll talk with them, and I think I'm making sense, and I'm not. Or I think it's coming out right and they're, they're hearing a whole total different, total different thing. And then you keep trying to fix it. You ever had one of those conversations where you, you, you know it wasn't getting through or you know you said it wrong and then you try to fix it? And we have a saying, would you like a shovel to keep digging with? <laughs> you ever kept digging yourself a hole? Well, I'm, it's just not coming out right. I, I've told you about the, the two specific times in my life. There's been more, that's, but the two specific times in my life. Once was when I was in college, and I was discouraged, and I wanted to come home. 
I was homesick. I was struggling with a lot of different things. I was struggling on my job because I, I didn't know how to do a lot of the things and I was struggling with that and I, I was struggling in, in some classes. I, did just, I was battling and struggling and uh, at one lunch period, I didn't even go to lunch. So you know it was bad. Like I said, you know it was bad. I didn't go to lunch. But I, I just was down and I had an hour before I needed to be at my next class. And I, they had prayer rooms on, on the floors where we, they would have one of the rooms they left empty and that's where you could go and you could pray. Um, and so I went in there and I just knelt down and I didn't even know what to pray for. So I just spent, I don't know how much time just going, God help me. God help me. I didn't even really know what to pray for or how to pray for it. I just knew I needed help. Somehow I needed help out of that. And I remember God entering that room. I remember when they were getting my wife ready to take her in because they, they, they needed to take Jonathan because he was struggling and I remember they put me in this little room, just this little bitty waiting room. Just one person could only be in there, just a small little room while they were getting her ready. And I'll be honest with you, I, I didn't even know how or what or why. They had just asked us, what do we do if he's born, not breathing? I mean, all this stuff they asked, uh, you're just, you don't, you're shocked. You don't know what to do. And all I could do was just cry out for help. I didn't even know really what to pray for. But I knew I needed help. And I remember God stepping into that room. This is an amazing thing. You need prayer that is linked with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is going to help, help you. Because look what it says. Let's keep reading there. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. The Bible says man looking on the outward appearance, God looketh on the heart. As God is searching our heart, he also knows the mind of the Spirit because the Holy Spirit is God. So the Holy Spirit knows us. And he intercedes with those utters and utterings and groanings. And, and the, 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 the Trinity is working on our behalf in prayer. And God will listen even if sometimes we're not making sense. Isn't that an amazing thing? To have the Holy Spirit link up with you in prayer. We get real stuck on how fancy our prayers sound. And by the way, I think public prayer should be articulate. Articulate. I didn't even say that right. Articulate. <laughs> and in the South. Uh, articulate. I think they should. I, I don't think that we should. You know, but at the same time, if we think because of our flowery words, that's what's touching the heart of God. The Pharisee had very flowery words. I thank God that I do this and I do that and I do the other thing. And I'm glad I'm not like this publican. But the publican went justified. The Pharisee goes praying to himself. You realize that you're not supposed to pray to yourself, right? Amen. Amen. You're not supposed to pray to hear yourself sound good. And you're not supposed to be praying to others so that they hear you sound good. It's not a who can pray better contest. It's a let's get a hold of heaven. Amen. Amen. And that is a work between you and the Holy Spirit and the Father and the Son. But the Holy Spirit dwells within us and he can help you in prayer. So we should be mindful of, of, of praying in the Spirit and praying guided by the Holy Spirit, led by the Holy Spirit. But even if we get it wrong, he can fix it. That's an amazing thing. Christ intercedes for us because of our sin. He makes intercession um, for us when it comes to our sin. But the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us in all of our prayers through our Christian life. He intercedes on your behalf when you're praying for somebody. He intercedes on your behalf when you have a need, when you need help, when you need wisdom, when you need those spiritual needs. So we need the Holy Spirit. He intercedes for us and with us. This is very interesting. But in Romans 8, 26 and 27, um, the word intercession there, when he intercedes, is two different words. It's not the same word used for both. The first word indicates that the Holy Spirit not only goes for us, but with us to the Father. That's an amazing thing, isn't it? He's praying for us. But he's also 
right there with us. Wow. I'll tell you, um, I, there's, a, um, there's been some stories that, of, of people that have had to go to court. And um, uh, there's an old saying, a person that tries to defend himself has a fool for a client. That's a saying in, in law circles. It, it, even when, when somebody comes out and says they want to defend themselves in court, the judge will usually always say, I don't recommend this. Why? Those lawyers know what they're doing. Right. Those lawyers have studied and practiced and they know how the system works. We don't know how the system works. They know how things go. When my wife, it was an amazing thing. When my wife... Uh, was going to do her uh, 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 permanent resident paperwork. We went through a lawyer. And uh, it was an amazing thing to watch it because they told us, oh, it'll probably take about an hour, probably take, you know, because they got all these questions, all these things. It took us 15 minutes. It took us longer because the, the agent got interested in the story of Jonathan, so she was asking about that. But the actual part about her, her permanent resident took 15 minutes. You know why? Because the lawyer went in with us. Well, one of the advocates from his office went in with us. And it was amazing to watch. So we walk in there and, and you know, of course, we're all nervous. And she's, she's memorized all those facts about the United States. All. No, that was the citizenship test. This was the first one. And I just, but she's nervous and all these questions that they're going to ask. And he goes in and he's going, oh, it's good to see you. And he knows everybody there. And, oh, good to see you. We go into the office. We sit down in front of the agent. And, you know, they always look serious, you know. And we're sitting there nervous, you know. Advocate sitting back there and the agent would say, I need this paper. I need this paper. I need this paper. He's got this big old folder. He's giving it all to him. Few questions. It's done. How it went. I sure I'm glad that he was there with me. We sure were glad it went so smooth. And we know it was the Lord, of course. But God used that advocate on our behalf to help us make sure every paperwork, they had done all that prep work ahead of time. I mean, before it was done, they, they called us, say, up, oh, we need this, up, 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 we can't go without this, up, oh, we need this, oh, we need, don't forget to get this. Don't get this. And everything in order, so when we walked in there, it was just done, gone, Amen. hallelujah. She's a permanent resident, ready on her way to citizenship. Amen? And, uh, which she has, by the way. Uh, but but when, I, when I sat back, and I, afterwards we walked out, we went, wow. It didn't take half the time that they said it was going to take. No, because we had an advocate. You know you have an advocate, right? Someone that will not only go to the court for you, but also walk in there with you. We are supposed to go boldly into the throne room of grace, right? And guess who goes in with us? The sweet Holy Spirit. Isn't that an amazing thing? But that's how we get prayers answered. It's not about you and your flowery words and and saying everything exactly properly and all of that. It's about a heart that is right with God, a heart that is fervently desiring an answer from God and relying upon the Holy Spirit to guide you and lead you and walk with you into that throne room. That's an amazing thing. I, I, that's, when I was studying for this, that gave me chills. To think of the Holy Spirit walking in there with me. It makes sense, doesn't he? He does dwell within us, right? Yeah. So therefore, if we're going in, who's going with us? Holy Spirit, isn't that amazing? That's why I'm glad that I don't have a belief system, which is not the Bible, but I'm glad I don't have a belief system that I can lose the Holy Spirit. Because he's always with me. Making intercession. So first, because we do not always know what to pray for, um, so why does the Holy Spirit go for us and with us? Because we do not always know what to pray for, though we might think we do. And secondly, because the Holy Spirit knows exactly what needs to happen. The Holy Spirit approaches the Father with us and intercedes for us. There have been times when I've had an idea. And I've, I thought it was a really good idea. And then I'll talk with somebody and they'll say, you know what? That, that, that is a good idea, but what about if we did it this way? And then I realized when they said it, what they thought, I went, that's a better idea. You know, sometimes we go in thinking we know the way things should go. But you know who always has the best idea? God does. Yes, sir. So the Holy Spirit can go in with us 
And sometimes his, his idea, because he's God, is even better than ours. We are human, right? We are frail. We're limited in our thinking. It's an amazing thing to realize that we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. And by the way, one last thing in closing here. Fervent prayer takes faith. James chapter number one. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. That's prayer, right? That giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. This is James 1, 5 through 7. Those that are taking notes, James 1, 5 through 7. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. That's pretty strong words right there. Saying without faith, you're going to receive nothing from the Lord. Wow. Faith matters. We already talked about that. We've got to have the characteristic of faith, right? Do you realize that that also needs to be applied to your prayer life? Amen. Don't go to God cynically. Don't go to God saying, well, I'm going to pray because I know that's what I'm supposed to do, but I don't really think it's going to get answered. We should go believing. And you say, what about if I don't believe? Then why can't you ask like the disciples, help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. So if you have the faith of a little mustard seed, just a little bitty, little bitty seed, put that little seed in the ground and a whole uh, uh, plant will grow, Right? You take the little bit of faith you have, ask God to build it, ask God to grow it, use it in your prayer. If you're going to ask God for something, believe that he can do it. Even if you have a hard time believing it's going to happen, at least believe that he can do it. Well, I don't, I don't even know if God can do this. No, we're, we're too spiritual. We won't say that, but that's really what we're thinking. Boy, we ought to have faith. Faith and prayer. Just some thoughts on building the characteristic of prayer into your Christian life. Heavenly Father, thank you for Sunday school, a time to learn and grow and get into your word and spend some time together. And I pray that you would have your hand upon our Sunday school, our church, our bus ministry. Lord, I'm asking that this wave that we're going through right now would dissipate quickly. Quickly, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Any questions? Any questions? Comments, questions? Amen. We'll be back in about 15 minutes. Well, Jonathan, let's go take care of that printing real quick.